This is One on One. Grace Kennan Warnicke is the author of a, a compelling book called Daughter of the Cold War. Good to see you, Grace. Good to be here. I was just saying before we got into this interview on air, you've led an amazing life. I have. And born mm -hmm. in? Riga, Latvia. Yeah. And describe your childhood. My childhood is hard to describe because it was constant motion. It changed all the time. By the time I was 12, I spoke five languages. I spoke English, Norwegian, German, Portuguese, and Russian. Um, I never went to the same school twice till I was in the 11th grade. Because? Because my father was in the Foreign Service. Tell everyone your father. My father was a, later became a well-known ambassador to the Soviet Union, That's George right. Kennan, who formulated the containment policy, which was our policy towards Russia for over 50 years. Yeah. So it's interesting. You are an expert on and care deeply about U.S.-Russia uh, relations. I never considered myself an expert, but well, maybe you know I well. am. I do know it well. Yeah. And why is, why is that relationship so critically important to not just the U.S., Russia, but the world? Well, because we're among the largest countries in the world. We're in that group. And for many years when it was the Soviet Union, Soviet Union was a very powerful and large country. And we were the two major China that was just starting up. And That's they, right. they weren't considered part of the, the group, really. You went to public school in the Soviet Union? I went to public Soviet school Union. in Moscow. Describe that. It was a regular public school. Regular? There well, there were no other foreign children. The embassies did not allow them. It was wartime. It was just you. And we got there because our previous post had been Portugal. They couldn't get us back to the United States. So I was the only foreigner in the whole school, except for the daughter of a Chinese communist who seemed to live there full time. Mm. And when I started, I didn't speak a word of Russian. I was 12 years old, and I was just put in school. And um, the first day... At that point, it was a single-sex education, so it was all girls. The first day, they all shoved around me, put me in a corner, and lifted up my skirts because they wanted to see what American underwear looked like. Do they think they, what, 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 that, that really was, happened? Yes. Did I they was, think you were some sort of spy? No, they didn't. We were allies. It was oh, war oh you know, put that in context for us. Yeah. So Explain this that was us. a time when we were friends with Russia, very good friends. Because? And we were fighting the war against the Germans That's together. Right. That's right. It was, it was mutually it, it beneficial. Was mutually beneficial. When did it change? And I would go out whenever Stalin had a victory. They, they didn't celebrate. The West, Joseph Stalin? The Joseph Stalin. We would all be called into the main hall, and we would cheer for Comrade Stalin. And I was cheering away, too. Now, by the way, you had a Stalin connection. Stalin's daughter? I took care, ended up taking care of Svetlana Stalin when she came to this country. <laughs> yeah, just a typical life so far. Um, the, 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 the main message, I hate to ask it that way because the book is so complex, and make sure you go check it out. What is the main message you want to get across in Daughter of the Cold War? Well, I have about three messages. Sure. I call my life an improvisational life. It was the most unplanned, unforeseen life. I grew up at a time I graduated from college when there weren't a lot of opportunities for women. I would have loved to have gone into the Foreign Service, but it wasn't, there were no women in the Foreign Service. And then I got married. I did the more tradition, had three children. And it was only when that ended that I started this long parade of jobs. And my main skill was that I knew the Russian language that I knew Russian, so it got me into, a, I, I went over there for television stations. I took Senator Kennedy did, did over to Russia. Did you help Ted Kennedy? Yeah, Senator Kennedy. I took Senator What did you help him do? Everything. I mean, we were, every day we were meeting people. I was translating. I was organizing. There you are in that shot right there. I'm looking at a picture of you and, Bre is that Brezhnev? Yes. <sighs> so there we were, walking down the halls of the Kremlin. That was very exciting. I interrupted. The other messages that you want to... Uh, Deliver here the book. Well, somewhat the messages of being a woman when it was difficult to be a woman. Sure. And another message that for some people they have very planned lives. They go to medical school, they become a doctor, that kind of thing. I went absolutely in the opposite direction. I zigzagged from 
pillar to post. I had a lot of adventures. In some ways, I would call this an adventure book. I mean, I ended up at the coronation of the King of Nepal and things you would never think of. I took Joan <laughs> Baez to Russia. Well, what, what, how did that play out? Uh, well, listen. yeah, Woodstock. I mean, in all seriousness, <laughs> how, do you, where does, how does the Joan Baez connection happen? Well, she was quite serious. She was very to, political. She's very political, and she wanted to meet Sakharov. Really? That's why we. Andrei Sakharov. Yes, yeah, so Andrei Sakharov. And I. We organized it, and I took her to meet Sakharov. Why so, you? Well, because I'd already met her because I'd found her a Russian song to sing when she was going to go over with um, the Beach Boys. They were going to do a big concert in Russia that got canceled. Right. And the music critic for the Chronicle happened to be a friend, and he said, would yeah. you find a song for Joan Baez? And that's how it all started. Yeah. Uh, one other person I want to ask you about. Maybe two. Vladimir Putin. Well, I did. I'm one of the few people I met a half an hour alone with Vladimir Putin. What year? It was, um, I think, 92. KGB? Um, well, I knew he was KGB. Well, but, you knew. But he was deputy mayor of St. Petersburg. Oh, and really? I was, I had my, I started my own business consultancy firm. And I had a client who wanted something to do with a port of St. Petersburg. And I had a meeting with the real mayor, whose name was Subchuk. So I was thrilled. I was taking. I was going to go meet the mayor, discuss my clients' things. Mayor was out of town. Instead, they produced this rather small guy named Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. And he didn't want to meet me. I think he was annoyed by having to meet with an American woman. And um, he didn't take me seriously. How can women be president of anything? What did you say about his eyes? I said he had the coldest eyes I ever saw. Coldest. They were really cold. I, at the time, I thought, my God, what if I was being interrogated by him? He would wow. really scare you. Uh, before I let you out, any thoughts on Trump, Putin, together? Well, who knows? I mean, I don't think you can predict either one. Scare you? Yeah. A lot or a little? Uh, I think these are, uh, these are tough times in U.S.-Russian relations. We're going through a difficult period. Yes, I'm scared. I thank you for joining us. Well, Do you mind if you. I tell folks about the book again? Yes. Daughter of the Cold War. A war, excuse me. Grace Kennan Wernicke. Thank you. Stay right there. Thank you. Now, when we come back, my colleague Joanna Gagas goes on location to Virtua in Voorhees, New Jersey, to look at the role that maternal fetal medicine plays in high-risk pregnancies and how more women than ever before are able to bring hope of starting a family to life. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Office of the Insurance Fraud Prosecutor. New Jersey State Nurses Association and the Institute for Nursing, Johnson & Johnson, the Northward Center, Adler Aphasia Center, Verizon, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.